All right, hi everybody. Today, Luna and I are gonna tell you about Charles Darwin. Okay, so here we go. This is a brief history of Charles Darwin, who is a biologist, geologist, and naturalist, who is perhaps best known for his theory of evolution by the process of natural selection. Charles Darwin was born in 1809, which happens to be the same year that the French biologist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck published his theory on evolution, which is often summarized as the inheritance of acquired characteristics or the use and disuse theory. For example, a giraffe stretching its neck its whole life would end up with a longer neck. And then when it reproduced, it would pass on this longer neck to the baby giraffes, thereby passing on the acquired traits to its offspring. Lamarck's theory was generally considered incorrect, as we now know that genes are inherited from parents to offspring. Recent studies in the field of epigenetics, however, are suggesting that some portions of DNA expression may be inherited and that are not part of the DNA, thus on rare occasions, perhaps part of Lamarck's theory may work. But anyway, Back to Charles Darwin. Darwin had excellent resources growing up. His father, Dr. Robert Darwin, was a well-known medical doctor, and his grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, was also a medical doctor, a poet, philosopher, naturalist, and a well-known abolitionist. Dr. Erasmus Darwin even wrote his own theory of evolution, but like many before, it lacked a mechanism explaining how it happened. Darwin was the fifth of six children and he attended the Shrewsbury School as a child. Darwin started medical school at the age of 16 at the University of Edinburgh, but he finds medical school to be boring and although passing, he's not doing as well as expected. In one set of classes, Darwin learns taxidermy, the art and science of stuffing dead animals, from a freed slave named John Edmonston, who teaches the subject at the University of Edinburgh. Darwin's dad gets annoyed with his medical school performance and has him transferred to Christ College to begin studying to become a parson, sort of like a priest. During his first year, Darwin continues to neglect his studies, preferring to spend his time shooting and horseback riding. Darwin's cousin, also at Christ College, impresses Darwin with his butterfly collection, which inspires Darwin to take up the science of entomology, and Darwin begins collecting his own butterflies and beetles. Darwin learns biology, geology, botany, and other courses that tend to fall under the category of natural theology. The link between studying nature and religion is a common philosophy throughout most of Europe at this time. He focuses and graduates 10th out of his class of 178. Darwin graduate returns home and finds a letter recommending him from one of his professors for a self-funded naturalist position on the HMS Beagle that was going to map the coast of South America under the direction of Captain Robert Fitzroy. At first, Darwin's dad disagrees with the trip, but he later is convinced and he ends up paying for Darwin's spot on the HMS Beagle. The HMS Beagle set sail on December 27, 1831, along with Captain Fitzroy and Charles Darwin and the rest of the crew. Darwin spends a great deal of his time on shore studying the geology and biology of the areas they encounter. Darwin is seasick for most of the trip, but he manages to keep detailed notes along the way. Darwin would find and identify the remains of a giant ground sloth, Megatherium, and would remark in his notebook that many fossils of extinct species seem similar to the animals he would find in similar areas. Darwin would read Charles Lyell's Principle of Geology book, which detailed how geological formations could change over very long periods of time, say millions of years, which was quite different than the general thoughts on geology at that time. Darwin and the crew of the HMS Beagle arrive at the Galapagos Islands in September of 1835. Like other places he has visited, Darwin admires and observes the geology and wildlife of the area. And then he takes out his gun and he shoots it. It's kind of a thing they did back then. 
Darwin collected finches and mockingbirds among his various specimens. His assistant, Sims Covington, also collected specimens and just happened to take better location data, which ends up being useful later on in the story. At this point, Darwin is already contemplating the idea that perhaps species were mutable and perhaps could change over time, but he doesn't have a mechanism to explain how that might happen. The journey of the HMS Beagle concluded on October 2, 1836, after almost a five-year voyage. Darwin has become a well-known biologist and geologist at this point, and he has a massive collection that interests the scientific community. Darwin visits many specialists and discusses his collection with experts. A famous ornithologist, John Gould, would conclude that Darwin's Galapagos finches and mockingbirds were actually distinct species rather than just varieties of those found on the mainland of South America, and that they were mostly unique to each island. Gould also stated that 25 of the 26 birds in the Galapagos Island were actually new to science and never had been discovered before. Darwin writes up manuscripts and publishes articles about his journey and privately continues to write and think about how species might change over time and what mechanism or force might be involved with that change. In 1839, Darwin marries his cousin, Emma. It's kind of a thing they did back then. They move to the countryside outside of London and they have 10 kids together, 10. In Darwin's study, he continues on and off to ponder the diversity of specimens he's encountered on the beagle and the idea of whether species can change over time or not. Darwin comes across a book written in 1798 by the English political scholar Thomas Malthus entitled An Essay on the Principle of Population. In Malthus's book, he suggests that the increasing of the nation's food production was only temporarily good because humans had a natural tendency to reproduce more than the availability of resources and that eventually population growth would lead to death and famine that would particularly impact the poor. Darwin noticed that many domesticated animals, such as dogs, had been selected and bred for particular characteristics. Darwin even raised and bred pigeons and very carefully measured the characteristics inherited in different breeding lines and how these seem to very much match the characteristics found in the wild rock pigeon. It appears around 1837, Darwin has finally figured the idea out. Drawing from his knowledge of geological change, domestic breeding of animals, and the wide range of species he's encountered on the HMS Beagle, Darwin comes to these conclusions. First, organisms have the ability to overpopulate. And second, since populations tend to stay about the same in a particular area, Darwin assumes there is obviously a struggle for survival. And organisms tend to vary, and that this variation was often inherited from the parents. So, nature was selecting which variations were considered favorable or not. This would later be changed into evolution by the process of natural selection. He writes up a very long manuscript in 1844, but he gets sick and he tells his wife to publish it if he dies. Darwin recovers and continues to work on what he calls his big book. He's hesitant to publish his idea until he can gather more evidence. At this point, the book is massive and he considers himself only halfway done. But one day in 1858, Darwin gets a letter from the self-taught naturalist named Alfred Wallace. In the letter, Wallace presents an idea that's almost identical to Darwin's, and he's requesting feedback. Darwin is well known at this time, and he shows the letter and his work to Charles Lyell. Lyell, also well known in the scientific community, presents the work of both Darwin and Wallace at the Linnaean Society meeting in July of 1858 on the tendency of species to form varieties and the perpetuation of varieties and species by natural means of selection. The meeting goes very well, everybody seems happy, and both Wallace and Darwin are given credit for coming up with the idea. 
Darwin then gets to serious work. He rewrites his big book in less than one year and finishes and publishes The Origin of Species in 1859. Darwin's book is a bestseller. It generates a great deal of debate, but is generally accepted by the scientific community. Over time, his theory would be combined with knowledge of modern-day genetics and inheritance, and thus Darwin's work remains relevant to this day, and his theory of evolution by the process of natural selection clearly demonstrates a mechanism for how species may change over time.